In this video, I'm going to be looking at a eutectic alloy thermal equilibrium diagram, specifically this diagram from the 2018 higher level question four. Um, now, the first thing I want you to notice is this is a cadmium zinc alloy diagram, which is the most common one that you will see on the leaving cert. And you can always tell if it's a eutectic alloy because the end of solidification temperature is always the same as it goes across. So we're going to start off with our um, diagram and our axes. And as with all thermal equilibrium diagrams, the horizontal or X axis is always um, across the bottom. Now I'm doing this drawing in landscape style because that's purely a personal preference. Um, you can do it whichever way you like. So I'm going to start here with zero and I'm going to go in 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And this is the reason why I tend to go landscape style because it allows me to spread out these numbers much more easily, much more evenly. So this is our percentage alloy and specifically this case, I'm looking at zinc only. And this, then you have your two, you have your horizontal axis. And in this case here, your horizontal axis is going to be temperature in degrees centigrade. Now, if you look at the diagram here, the lowest temperature is 266, the highest temperature is 401. So we need to fit between 250 and 450 in here. So if we go maybe in steps of 50, so if I start down the bottom here at two, let's say 200, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, 500, perfect. So I'm gonna start off at 200 degrees, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, and 500. Now, I started at 200 because everything below that point is, there's no information to be gained from that. And I've mentioned this in a previous video, but I'm mentioning it again now. I'm starting from 200 because I'm only interested in the actual diagram itself, uh, the actual graph, plotted graph itself. Everything below that, it's just a pure solid and is of no interest to us whatsoever. So I'm going to start by plotting these points. And the first one is 250, 260, 255, 260, 265. So approximately there is 266. And what I'm going to do is 55, 60, 65. And what I'm going to do is this is just a horizontal line. Um, so you can just draw a straight horizontal line for that bottom point. That makes life much easier for us in this. Now our second one then, we're going to 290 for my first point, down to 266. Now, important point to note here, um, a 10%, sorry, my apologies. So the melting point for cadmium is three, two, one. You'll see it from the diagram there. So three, two, one, which is five, 10, 15, 20 is approximately there. This is 290. And then at 14%, which is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14%, that is at 266. So that's very important. Be very careful when you're reading the graph. If you look at it, it's 10 is our first number, 290. We are told in the question that the melting temperature of cadmium is 321. And the melting temperature of zinc is 5, 10, 15, is 419. So it's very important you get those two points in first before you do anything else, because it's very easy to get mixed up. Now we're going back up to 20% and it is 275, which is 95, 98, 80, 275, which is there. Uh, 293, which is approximately there. 310, which is there at 40%. 328, so it's going to be approximately there. 345, 350, 345 is there, 362, so 350, 362, which is there, 380, which is there, and then 401. Uh, sorry, I missed a number there somewhere, my apologies. So 40 is 310, yep. 5328, 60, 345, 70, 362, 80, 380, I know where I went wrong, 90 is 401, 
I made my own mistake, and then there's that top point there. So, join up these points, it won't be straight lines. There's a slight curve in it. And that is your tectic ally. Now you're always asked to label three points on this diagram. You have your liquidus. Your solidus. And your eutectic. Now, what's important with this diagram here is at the eutectic point, there is no drop in temperature as it cools. Pure cadmium will actually drop in temperature as it cools between 321 and 266. Pure zinc will drop in temperature as it cools from 419 um, down to 266. Only at the eutectic alloy will you see a no drop in temperature as it cools. So that's, the, that's our eutectic point. Now those are your first two parts. Now the last part is your ratio of phases. Now the ratio of phases here is similar to the ratio of phases for your uh, solid solution um, alloy. Just because the graph is slightly different, the way we do it is going to be slightly different, but the same theory applies across all of these. So we're told that 60% uh, zinc, which is that point there, we're asked for the ratio of phases at 300 degrees. So the ratio of phases at 300 degrees, you draw your horizontal line at 300 degrees, you draw your vertical line at 60%, and that gives us our same three points as we had before. There is point A, there is point B, and there is point C all the way out here. Now again, we have your ratio of liquid to solid. So you have your ratio AB, and you have your ratio BC. What you're asked is what is the ratio of solid to liquid at this point? Well, first of all, again, if you can't remember which is solid, which is liquid, this is a handy little trick that I figured out. If you start here at point A with my ruler, point A, B is zero. There is zero between point A and B, and we know that is 100% liquid. As I move my ruler down, the ratio of solid is increasing and the ratio of liquid is decreasing until I get all the way down to this point here at C where I have 100% solid and 0% liquid. So when BC is 0, I have 100% solid. That means AB is measuring my ratio of solid, BC is measuring my ratio of liquid. Now, even if you get this wrong, if you just write down solid and liquid or liquid and solid up here, you will only lose a small portion of marks because you labeled these the wrong way out round. But as long as you go through every step after this, uh, you will get all the rest of the marks. So from point A, I drop down a line and I get 31, 2, 3, 34 approximately. And at the other end, I have 100. So... My ratio here is going to be AB is going to be 60 minus 34. And the ratio at the other side is 100 minus 60. So this gives me 26 on one side and it gives me 30 on the other side. So that's almost 1 is to 1. In actual fact, it's roughly 1 is to 1.2. So for every one unit of solid, there is 1.2 units of liquid at this point. Um, that is it. That is that question answered. Hope you found this video useful. Um, if there's any problems, um, make contact with me. Okay, thank you.